By Crom, just when you think that Jim Zub and Roberto de la Torre couldn't get better, you read the third issue. Oh my. Where's Hal, everybody, and welcome to yet another video, where I'm back, my dear friends, with what I officially call the best comic book series of 2023, and not only that, one of the better Conan stories I have read in a long time, and because I have had the opportunity to read a little bit of Chuck Dixon's uh, Conan book that he published this year, and uh, the difference between Jim Zub's Conan comic book here and Chuck Dixon's novel is that in Chuck Dixon's novel you can clearly tell that he is trying to imitate the language of uh, Robert E. Howard and uh, that he is trying as much as possible but it's still an imitation and you can clearly tell and he has mentioned it several times in interviews and his own videos that he's not uh, the, the biggest fan of the fantasy genre uh, but here in Jim Zabs not only did he manage to write a tremendous script and dialogue that is very close, I mean extremely close to Robert E. Howard's writing, but also imitates the archaic language that we connect with fantasy so much. And specifically, I am now talking about alliteration, and I will delve deeply into it in, in this review. First, I need to say yes, I will show some uh, pages and some panels, and there will be spoilers, so if you don't want this comic book to be spoiled for you, please leave and come back when you've read it. Now, I, I was amazed by the use of alliteration and I will provide examples especially because myself I have delved into the study and production of alliterative poems. I've published two uh, poetry collections collecting poems based, as far as the metre goes, on the old English alliterative metre of the kind of, uh, well, in which Beowulf was written. And uh, it was used, among many other purposes, so that the language, so that the poem has rhythm, so it sounds good, so there is the beat, so it sounds strong, but th at the same time very natural. And that is what uh, Jim Zab here has achieved. But of course, we open with uh, the necessary no, O oh, prince, that between the years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the and so on and so forth, and each and every time I read these lines, I'm a huge fan of the books, but I can't, I can't but remember and think of the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and uh, the opening splash page is then, um, of course, uh, reminding us of what happened before that Conan the Barbarian has uh, teamed up with Brisa, a uh, picked woman, a, uh, well, not, not refugee, but she escaped from a, an undead army that has slain her tribe and now is marching or marched through the lands uh, towards Hymeria with a dark purpose, slaying everybody on their way and uh, taking some people with them as well. Now, we uh, get to know that Conan's own country has been pillaged as well and that uh, apparently seemingly nobody survived and they uh, 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 then they go to a uh, what seems to be a tower made of uh, black stone where the undead army enters and the second issue ended there. And the opening picture here is really re reminding me of uh, so many artists. This is a combination, I would say, of uh, Frank Frizetta, of Mike Mignola as well. There are strong Mignolesque aspects, but also uh, the, the old um, Marvel comic book artist that illustrated uh, the uh, first comic books uh, published about Conan the Barbarian. So they uh, venture into the tower, into the corridors and into the tunnels in search of the undead army. And what they don't find, they find uh, survivors, they find uh, some prisoners, some Cimmerian prisoners who have been starved almost to death. And uh, they are at the peak of their strengths, or I mean, not not peak at the bottom, sorry, of their strengths. And here is where the dialogue starts, and it's just it just flows, it just reads itself. I'm no mirage, you broken beasts. Look upon me and remember the steel soul crom breathed in, in your birth. Conan, son of Corin, my brother in arms, 
Of all the men I dare hope might find us here, never would I have thought it be you. And yet, here I stand. When we found the village fallen and infested with corpses, we assumed the fiends had slain you all. But it gets better. I swear upon Krom's screaming skull, I'll find a way to set you free and slay every one of those baneful bastards. <laughs> and so we find out that uh, there are some hooded characters looking uh, very much like the Nazgul in this picture, um, leading those undead slaves on chains. And then um, we discover what's underneath those hoods. And it, this is a creature that, I mean, instantly I thought of all the old 80s um, f fantasy cartoons like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe or Thundercats, uh, Thundercats. And at the same time, a little bit of a Tolkien-esque orc is in that character. It looks... It looks very, very, very beautiful. Uh, and here, of course, we've got um, the action scenes as well. So there is a lot of fighting. And it needs to be said that the artwork is something that I have also enjoyed extraordinarily. One more uh, piece of dialogue here, which is written just gloriously. Well struck, my friends. Well struck indeed. Our blood boils with yours, brother. Let's crack this cage and make murder. Man, <laughs> this is just so awesome. Uh, we've got a little bit of a romance as well uh, between Brisa, uh, whatever her name is. I, I keep forgetting her name, I'm, I'm sorry. And Conan about, uh, you know, returning the sword that is by right her because it is a Pictish blade. And she says this, you know, this is a little bit of a cliche, but cliche belongs into uh, a Conan the Barbarian book. So I am I'm glad that um, uh, Jim Zab um, and uh, De La Torre, uh, that they included this, like, very classic, uh, heroic, uh, <laughs> almost cliche line, like, You'll give it to me when you return. This is this is so nice, uh, you know. But I think that we can be pretty much sure that he will return to her because you know he's the hero, he's the protagonist, he's Conan the Barbarian. Conan can never die. Come on, and so they separate. Uh, they separate their ways. Uh, Conan continues with some of his new companions in search of uh, more surviving Cimmerians and also the undead army to discover what's going on. And she is to lead uh, the rest of the prisoners, uh, well, to freedom. And then we find out one more name that is sounding very, very familiar to all Conan fans, and that's Thalsa Doom is all behind this. And uh, it couldn't get more excited at this point, can it? Well, you've got an extraordinarily beautiful splash page <laughs> of a fight between Conan, his companions, and those strange uh, masters of the universe creatures. And uh, well, that, that's all I'm going to show you today, because I really don't want to spoil m uh, too much. I don't want to show you too much. This is not a, like a live reading of the comic. This is only a review. Me saying... 100% recommend. And if I thought that issue 1 and 2 are brilliant, this one is better. So, so far, the quality of this series is increasing. It goes up. So, I am extraordinarily excited about the fourth issue. I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait to read it. All right, then. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, my dear friends. And that'll be all. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm out of here.